so we've been looking at the whole armor that you're supposed to put on. You've been studying the book of Ephesians and looking at the armor that as Christians you're supposed to put on. And we are in Ephesians 6 verse 13, we see that, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So he's saying to you that without this armor, when the evil day comes, you're not going to be able to stand. And remember, the evil day comes to everyone. Jesus says, I'm going to show you the wise man. The wise man is he who built his house on the rock. So when the wind comes and beat that house, it remains standing. But the foolish one built his house on sun. And when the wind comes, it blows it away. Now, the one thing that is constant is whether you're wise or you're foolish, the winds are going to come. So what differentiates the foolish from the wise is that the wise guy built his house on a rock, but the wind will come to both. Now, he is telling you that there's an evil day that is going to come. In Ephesians 6 verse 13, there's an evil day that is coming, and the only way that you're going to be able to stand is if, if you put on the whole armor. And we've been studying this armor, and verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins got about with, the, with truth, and having on, the bless, uh, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So you have the belt of truth and you have the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. Then in verse 15, it tells you, and your feet, now this is where we are going, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So it's telling you that your feet have, you have to put on the sandals of readiness, the sandals of the preparation of the gospel of Christ. As far as God is concerned, I found this funny, I found this quite interesting, that as far as God is concerned, the people with the most beautiful feet in God's eye are the people who preach the gospel. So if, you're not, you've, not, if you've not been sharing the gospel, uh, your feet are not that beautiful in the eyes of God. <laughs> so in Isaiah 52 verse 7, he says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Say, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. You see, the, the, the gospel that we preach is the gospel of peace. And you have to realize that when you're preaching, or when, and when I say preaching, I don't necessarily mean you standing on a pulpit with a microphone, no. I'm just talking about you sharing the gospel with those around you, those in your, what you call your oikos, in your sphere of contact, your friends at school, your colleagues at work. You have to share the gospel because the gospel is not motivational speaking. When you're talking about the gospel, you're not talking about motivation. You're not motivating people. You're not trying to inspire people. The Bible says that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God. If you really love the people around you, then you're going to share Christ with them, with them because that is the power unto salvation. Nothing can save people apart from the power of God, which is found in the gospel. So I'm just encouraging you to share the word of God with those around you. The love that you have received with Christ. Tell people about it, don't be quiet. It is not your work to convert them. Your work is just to say. Go and say, go and tell it to the nations. Your work is just to say it. Remember, we are co-laborers together with Christ. We are not working alone. We are working together with Christ. And the moment you share the gospel, it is the work of God to confirm his word with signs and wonders. It is not your work to convert the hearts of people. It's not your work to convict people. It is the Holy Spirit that is going to convict people of sin and convict people of righteousness. Your work is just to say it. Speak the word. Amen. So do not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So speak the word. Hallelujah. So shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We give you all the honor and all the glory. I ask for the grace of Father to my brother, for my brothers and sisters that they will have the boldness to declare a word, that they will have the boldness, that we will have the boldness to proclaim your word unto everybody that is in our sphere of contact. And we trust you, my God, that you're going to confirm your word with signs and wonders. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.